Hey all, Eric here. Uh, I thought I'd do a quick devlog about this title that I've been working on. So here's the the guy, and uh, you can walk around, and you kind of see that like uh, white box with the diagonal line through it. That's an item, like a an inventory item. And when I walk over it, I will pick it up, and on the bottom left of the screen, you'll see a thing flash, indicating that I have that thing now. There you go. And what that allows me to do is just like uh, shoot this cool purple beam and pull boxes toward me. So I wanted to add a quick pop-up message window explaining like, hey, you got a cool thing that will let you pull boxes toward you. So yeah, I thought I'd do a devlog about that, about how I'm gonna just get that message box to pop up and then disappear. I'm hoping that this will be pretty straightforward. They, they never are, right? They're, they're never all that straightforward. Um, but uh, so if, if kind of here's our, our like full screen here our play area um when the player grabs that item i think i'll do a little stop the world thing so we'll we'll block player input and at some point in the screen at some point on the screen rather uh let me just mark that with some sort of like x we'll just we'll just pick something kind of in the middle of the screen like around here ish and then from that point i'll start by drawing like a, a small rectangle right um, and then I don't know if I'll do it every frame or every few frames, but we'll just like extend the length and width of that rectangle. Um, again, keeping the same origin. So we'll sort of, I don't know if it's going to let me do this without, <laughs> without actually changing the shape of that guy. So we'll kind of go like this and then like, uh, this, etc. And we'll just kind of like expand that out until we have ourselves a full size box on the screen. Um, and then regarding the message, what I'm thinking of doing is, uh, let's, let's say the message says like, uh, you know, you got, it won't have this nice, uh, <laughs> this nice script when it's printing on the screen, we'll use the Pico 8 font, but, uh, you got uh, a cool glove or you got, yeah, you got a cool glove. Um, and this will be stored in memory just as a string. So what I'm hoping we can do is similar to like a as the frame using the frame counter as our uh, source of time when we expand the message window. What I'm hoping is we can kind of do something similar with this. And so every few frames, uh, we'll just like take a larger and larger substring of this like parent string, and then sort of that'll give it that cool like typewriter printy effect on screen. If that's not possible, I mean, maybe I'll just dump the whole message out at once and be like, heck it, this is what we're doing. But it'd be cool if I could get a nice typewriter effect. So again, I'll use the frame counter for the source of time for both of these things at first to gradually draw a larger and larger rectangle. Um, and then to sort of take larger and larger slices of this string and display that on the screen. Um, we'll also probably put a block on player input while the thing is printing out. And then, uh, once the message has been printed, hopefully pretty quickly, so to not to annoy the player, um, I'll allow player input again. And like any button press, will just, you know, remove the message from the screen and it'll restart the game loop. Fortunately, I've already defined, um, events for when the player picks up the glove, which is that beam thing you just saw. And when he picks up the other item, uh, which is previously called wormhole, uh, although it's not, it's not that anymore. Um, so I'm just going to reuse those events and add some handlers to allow the game to do the stop the world bit. So I've already defined these um, sort of update and draw function pointers so that I can take my regular game loop in PQ8 and sort of point it at whatever function I want uh, during the sort of 60 frame per second update and draw bits. So what I am thinking is I'll just have um, update and draw functions for this message box state, and I'll just point the game loop to those functions. And presumably, I'm going to want to have different messages for each of the two items, because there are two. Um, and so for the, the draw function, I'll just pass in like whatever the description is, like you got a cool glove, uh, press, blah, 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 like that. Um, and that'll be the message that gets gradually drawn out to the screen. Of course, I have not defined these functions yet, so I'm going to do that now.
what I'm thinking here is initially I'll just kind of draw the to get the dimensions in the box right. I'll draw what I want the final size to be. And then I'll use the frame counter to sort of gradually expand that. So I'll set this to some base size and then multiply that by the frame counter or some version of the frame counter, uh, some multiple of it to sort of expand the box to its eventual maximum size. But right now I just want to test to see what the maximum size should be. I uh, moved the item to be closer to the player's star point so that it would make testing a lot easier. And uh, let me just see, when I touch this item, hopefully we see a purple box. And we do. That positioning could be better. <laughs> um, but let me walk through the code really quickly and sort of explain what's going on here. So... We can hide this for now. I added this event handler function here uh, to reset our update and draw function pointers to be the message box update and the message box draw functions. And I'm passing in a string to the draw. The draw function was pretty interesting because I'm passing in an argument, but I need to use that as a function pointer. I'm using this sort of, um, you call it a curried function, but it's a function that returns a function. And so this function only takes one argument and it returns another function. And then we're gonna use that string in here later, we're just not using it yet. Um, and that just draws a rectangle to the screen. In our update function, I'm updating this global counter, <laughs> adding more global state, fantastic. Um, and I'm processing the queue just to make sure there's nothing hanging out in the queue. Um, and after five seconds, if there's a button press, then I set the thing, the game loop to be the regular game update and draw functions. I wanna play with the position of that rectangle a little bit. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, assuming all the text that I want to fit will actually fit. Now that we've got a rectangle that looks like a pretty decent dimension, let me just print the full string to this to make sure that what we want to write is going to fit, and then I'll work on growing this thing from a, a tiny rectangle seed. That's a lot of text. Okay, let me edit that. All right, so this is an improvement, I think. I managed to squash down the text and outline the various actions you can actually take with this item. So I wanted to extend, uh, emphasize that you can pull the boxes toward you and that when you hold the box, you can use the directional keys to put the box down somewhere else. And I think this text conveys that. And that's good enough for now. Let me add in the Pico 8 uh, characters really quickly. And also just kind of shift the text just a little bit. And then we'll work on the growing facet of this thing. OK, I think that's all right. Um, my thinking here was just to have <laughs> the, the intro, message, intro message, which is just, you got a cool glove. And then. Um, have the instructions each be on one line. So press and hold X. And then down below the second instruction would be like, then use up, down, left, right. And then have the descriptor of what that thing does come on the next line. So it kind of breaks it up nicely. No. <laughs> Okay, that's not what I expected, but okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, what I thought to do here was to draw the lower right-hand corner of the rectangle based on the frame counter that I have. So it starts at zero and gradually expands in the X and Y direction until it reaches the bottom right. Oh, but I started at zero. So this, this mid function, what you do is you pass mid three values, and it will always give you back the middle one. And then so um, I give it zero, I give it the frame counter, and I give it the maximum extent of the box in that dimension. And so what will happen is it'll always give back 
or so it'll it'll start by giving back this frame counter value until 90 frames have elapsed, at which point the message box frame counter value will be bigger than 90, and so it'll always give me back 90. And so that that kind of allows it to grow until it reaches some maximum value and then it, and then stop, it gets cut off. The reason I got this exciting little um, triangle art uh, is because I started off with zero, but what I should be doing is starting off with like this X coordinate, right? So I don't want the rectangle to grow from zero as the maximum extent. I want it to start from six and 30, I think, and then eight and 32. Let's see if that looks a little bit better. Okay, that's better. I want it to go way faster though. So I'm gonna add a multiple, an integer multiple to that value and see if that makes it go better. Okay, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. Let me just see that again. Neat, okay. Um, now I can sort of work on the typewriter text element. I'm still working on the string thing, but I just want to point out that I changed the border of this message box from gray to pink, and I love it. It's so much nicer that way. Back to coding. I'm sort of cheating here. Um, there's probably some math of magic I could do. By math magic, I mean simple arithmetic that I can do to um, time the printing of the message until the box expands, but I'm just going to estimate that it'll take about 20 frames to get that up there. Um, also, I, uh, I adjusted the speed of the growth of the box a little bit. So because the box is wider than it is long, or wider than it is tall, it's going to reach its Y extent first before it hits the X extent. And so I'm kind of making the X dimension grow faster than the Y dimension. So they, they finish at roughly the same time. And then after the box is done, that's when I want to start printing the message. So what I'm going to do here is define this new thing called new string, and I'm going to print that rather than printing the full string. Remember, the full message is contained inside this string here. And I'm going to take advantage of our mid function again. So Pico8 has a built-in substring function, which will let us take pieces of strings. And we pass in the string and the start index, which we want to at least be one. And as I said in the beginning, when I had that nice little paint thing up on the screen, we want to sort of grow the slice of our string over time. So we can do the same. It's like exactly the same thing as we did with the rectangle for the message box. What we're going to do is just call mid and take the mid of one. And then we'll do message box FC first to test. And the maximum of the, the maximum extent of our substring is going to be just the length of the string, which we can represent with just the pound sign str. Um, so this should give us something, I would think. Hey, that's pretty cool. I'm actually, actually pretty happy with that. Maybe we can make it go a little bit faster. Let me just add a an integer multiple here, and we'll see how that feels. Ooh, that was a little bit fast. Uh, let me back that up. I kind of like that. It kind of shows up being like halfway rendered already, but I'm kind of into it. Yeah, I'm totally into that. And now let me make sure that my button press to close this still works. And it does. I'm going to reduce the amount of time <laughs> before we let the player push a button because like five seconds is like a, a long heck of a time. Actually, it's 500 frames. It's not even five seconds. Uh, let's make it like two seconds. Let's make it one second. Heck, the player doesn't need to wait that long. Okay, that's pretty good. One thing that I noticed that is sort of broken now is before when the player would get the item, the little inventory in the lower left would flash. I'll see if I can throw that other clip up on the screen right now so you can see what I'm talking about. And we've, we've delayed that because of the way we stop the world when we pop the message box up. So it doesn't happen yet. Normally it would happen right away. But what happens is when we restart, it'll flash then like that, right? Oh, also I've totally got the button wrong. It's not X, it's zero. Uh, X, it's O. I will fix that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to update the draw function to make sure that the player's inventory is also being drawn to the screen or also being updated on the screen when we are doing this. 
the oops yeah in our message box update and message box draw functions i'll also add the update and draw functions for the player inventory which i already have i'm just calling them elsewhere one thing i noticed that's kind of interesting and kind of annoying is that in my original inventory draw code when i'm doing the inventory flashing i make this bigger when i'm doing the inventory flashing it sort of depends on the frame counter Right, so I'm using the frame counter to turn the flash on and off, for lack of a better expression. Um, and this is the global game frame counter. But when I do the stop the world thing to display the message box, the frame counter in the, the global game one is not being updated. The message box one is, though. So because all I'm doing here is a mod 3 to do the flashing, I can just use any value that's incrementing. So what I'm going to do in inventory draw is just pass in frame counter here. We'll call it FC. The old football club, <laughs> not GC, FC, not GameCube. Um, so we'll pass in FC here. And then if the two call sites, we can pass in either one. So if we look at inventory draw, um, for the message box draw, we're going to want to pass in the message box counter. And then for the regular inventory draw, we'll just pass in the global frame counter. That worked great. All right, I'm super happy with that. So I'm going to set up the text for the other message box as well, but I'm not going to bore you all with that. We'll just uh, assume it's going to look a lot like the one we just did. It's going to look a lot like that, but with other text. Um, so thank you for sitting through this devlog. I hope you enjoyed watching me draw rectangles and letters on the screen. And uh, I'll catch you all next time. Bye for now. Actually, addendum. Let me fix the gosh darn message that has the wrong button where it says press and hold. Hold up, hold up. I can't let the video end without that. I feel like that's the only thing people are going to see. Y'all are probably screaming at your monitor right now. Hold up, let me fix it. Okay, press and hold circle, not X. All right, now it's time to wrap up. Thank you all for checking out this devlog. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. Thank you all and see you next time. Bye for now.